A couple of general keyboard settings to kick us off then. At the bottom here, you have the option to quickly switch between different keyboards. For example, I can tap here and you can see that it quickly notifies you what keyboard you're using. So I'm switching from emojis to English UK to English Canadian. I can, however, long press or force touch on this icon and it will give me extra options to go to different keyboards, go to the left-handed or right-handed keyboards like so, or if I want to quickly jump to the keyboard settings, I can tap here at the top of the options. A couple of the highlights of the keyboard settings include being able to add new keyboard languages to the default keyboard by going to add new keyboards. You can edit the existing ones in the top right here so if you wanted to remove a keyboard that's how you would do it. Text replacement allows you to add abbreviated text. For example I can add a new one which might be B right back and the shortcut for that would be BRB. Save that so that now when I go to the keyboard and do BRB, it comes up as a replacement there. Press space and it automatically fills it in with my replacement text. And below that you have all the usual keyboard settings such as auto capitalization, auto correction, enable caps lock, predictive text. You can toggle all of these on and off depending on your own preferences. On the keyboard, if you do have one handed mode enabled, to turn it off simply tap on the chevron on either side of the keyboard. But to again quickly bring it back, force touch on the globe at the bottom and choose whichever keyboard you want. Now something you've probably all done when using an iPhone is the undo typing move whereby you shake the phone by accident and you bring up the this pop-up and maybe accidentally tap undo. Fortunately you can get it back by simply shaking the device again to redo the typing so make sure to remember that just in case you ever do undo typing. When typing on a keyboard you can get accented characters by long pressing, that's not a force touch, a long press on letters such as N to bring up the different accents. If you force touch however you'll bring up the cursor which means you're moving the cursor around the screen so just make sure you get that right. A long press not a force touch to get accented characters. Now if you are enjoying this bite sized snack of iPhone tips make sure to check out the full meal of 150 iPhone 10 tips, there's a link on screen now, do check it out. You can toggle between the QWERTY keyboard and the number keyboard by tapping on the button here. However, if you just wanted to quickly get one character, you can long press on the number keyboard, swipe to wherever you want, such as 7, and then it immediately switches it back to the QWERTY keyboard. So again, just press, hold and go to your key and then it switches back so you're not having to switch between the two manually. I also do this with capitalization, so if I hold down on the shift and swipe to a letter, I'm always getting capitals rather than lowercase. And if you wanted to go to special special characters, again press hold, go to percentage and then it switches back to numbers and special characters. As briefly mentioned earlier, you can force touch on the keyboard which then blanks out and then you can use it as a trackpad so you can see the cursor now moving around the screen as I swipe around it. Good to get to different parts of your text quickly rather than having to tap tap tap. When you're on the Safari web browser you can long press on the period button to get different domains such as .org, .com, .edu, whatever you're searching for. And finally, an iPad only function here. On the keyboard, you will see the special characters in grey. That means you can access them by swiping down on a key. For example, if I swipe down on T, that brings up a 5. If I swipe down on U, that brings up a 7. So it's just a quick way of accessing those special characters on an iPad device.